Hello and welcome to this special edition video for psychology of personality. And uh, due to popular demand, a couple questions out there about our special assignment in this class, I decided that we would I would put together a little video specific for the special assignment in this class. And what that refers to, of course, is the autoethnography. What you're looking at right now is the instructions that are contained in the course book itself. So it's very important that you read that whole thing. Read it in a way to gain an understanding of the assignment. That's what's really, really important. Rather than being task oriented, like, okay, what do I need to do? And you're, you're like reading it while you're doing it. Sit back, get a lawn chair out, sit in the sun and just read everything about it. Just read it before you're thinking about how to do it. And I'm going to kind of demonstrate a little bit how to do that as we'll go through this assignment together. Now, I start off in this, in this uh, area with the purpose of this assignment. You might recognize that I have a, a model. Every time I'm introducing an assignment, uh, it's called... Um, the model of presenting assignments in this way is called transparent assignments, where you're literally everything is laid out very clearly. I, I learned about this methodology at a conference from a colleague of mine who works at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And I uh, went to a, a seminar with her and just, I was really inspired by that. So I think it's important for you to understand the purpose of this assignment. You've been learning about theories of personality and particular for this class, you've been learning about the impact of sociocultural factors on the decisions you've made and not made regarding your personality. And so what I'm asking for in this particular assignment is for you to engage in some introspection as to your own personality, which in many ways we've been doing all semester. A lot of the discussion focus on introspection, but engaging in the process of introspection and looking at your own personality all the different ways we've measured personality, and of course, taking into consideration the different ways in which society has impacted your personality. I borrow from the world of anthropology. Anthropologists are deeply connected to both sociology and psychology, and what they do is they examine behavior in cultures. Their product, anthropologists, aside from, you know, other things that they write, the major output of the world of anthropology is called an ethnography. And an ethnography is a, is a deep picture of a particular culture. And it can be, we often sometimes think about native cultures, but I have a colleague in uh, Chicago who is a anthropologist and they study urban culture. They study things that happen, let's say the the LGBT community in in the um, in the city a or a gang membership in the city or even accountants in a city. You know, the city environment or environmentalists, you know, just take any one of those subcultures and you can examine them. And one of the things that is particular to anthropology and it's a big part of the the class i teach a introduction to cultural anthropology class and one of the uh interesting ways in which anthropologists engage in their work is they do it from the inside they join the group they're they actually are looking at things they're involved in that this is very in many ways different than psychology where the psychologist wants to remove their presence and influence. Anthropology feels um, one of the best ways to understand a culture is to go and live in it. And then from that lived experience and the data, they produce what's called an ethnography. 
We combine these ideas together. We look at psychology and ethnography. And I think about of all the uh, cultures that you've lived in, the one you can speak the most to is your own culture. So auto refers to self, self ethnography. So the idea is for you to examine your cultural life and how it influences your personality from a first person point of view. Sometimes in academia, you're asked to really uh, suppress the, the word I. I did this and I did, you know, you'll, you'll find different writing instruction trying to suppress that I. Not here. This is all about you. This is my experience. This is your experience. You speak to it in first person. You speak to it in a narrative point of view. It says storytelling. So let's take a look at some other sections of these instructions and uh, see if we can glean some additional understanding of to the purpose and processes in this particular assignment. So we look at the knowledge here. First, the knowledge and skills. These are the learning outcomes. Identify cultural factors that have contributed to your personality development. Write narrative descriptions of personal stories. These are once upon a time when I was eight years old, this happened, you know, kind of thing. You are, I'm a, like autobiography. This is an autoethnography where the focus is on an insightful presentation of a personal experience that has cultural factors associated with it and how it changed your life or changed the trajectory of your personality. So then we have identify personality characteristics that arose from the cultural experiences. And then this last piece, this is very important. This is what's making this a psychology assignment. Rather than just leaving it there, I want you to connect what you found to theory. It's one of the, one of the things that we do in psychology is we look at a phenomenon, our personal experience, and like, oh, if I look at this through the lens of Erickson, or if I look at this through attachment theory, or a looking glass self, or, you know, I, as I take these theories and look at my own experiences, I can make that connection. Like, this is a really good example of this theory. Maybe multiple theories. And so, because of all the, different all the different lenses that we have, all these theoretical foundations we have to be able to look at our own personal experiences. So the task is for you to reflect on your life, timeline-wise, you know, from early childhood on, and we'll get into the, um, into the outline in just a bit, bit that's really exemplified by the, um, by the rubric. But I want to focus here on some clues that I've given you. Okay, and first, areas of focus. These are suggested areas. They do not need to be... I'm not going to be doing a check sheet to make sure you've covered all these. This is to inspire you to think about events in your life that have cultural bearing on your personality. So here on page 318, you have areas of focus. These are the theories that I want you to uh, consider. So the psychodynamic structure of your personality, id, ego, and superego, experiences of attachment, gender identity, Carl Rogers' theory of self, the 16PF and the big five personality, the Myers-Briggs type inventory, and then irrational beliefs. These are things we've talked about in class that are in the book. I want you to be able to see your experiences and go, oh, it's related to these theories. Okay, so that's the list of theories. And then we look into some of the stuff that you might consider reflecting upon from your life. And we have early childhood experiences, family experiences, cultural values, norms, and expectations, school experiences, your pathway specifically through Erickson's psychosocial development, religion and spiritual factors, specific ethnic and racial heritage. We just got done talking about that. And behavioral approaches is, again, suggestions. The narrative story is the most important thing. It's almost, it's very similar to, um, in some of my other classes, I have service learning projects. And the service learning reflection paper is written in a manner 
that the individual reflects upon a story and said, basically, one day when I was at my volunteer experience, this and this happened. And then saying, this is a good example of what I've learned in this theory. And then the person defines the theory. And then finally, there's a paragraph that makes those connections, makes those connections very solid. So when I look at the story, it should in it should impact me as a grader as it's extremely clear that this individual understands this concept because they're able to see how it applies in the real world in very much the same way. You are telling stories about your life that exemplify the application of personality theory with its cultural influences on your life and the shaping of your personality. And you can refer to the big five, you know, what's what made you extroverted, what introverted experiences that you've had, what makes you agreeable, what makes you open to experiences, you know, how did those things play out? And that's just one theory. So now, as, as comprehensive as this can get, I mean, if you think about your life, your life is full of experiences that shape who you are. So in the outline of the paper, I'm sort of giving you some structure as to how you might approach without turning this into, you know, a hundreds of pages of biography and integration of theory in it, which is great. You want to do that. That's awesome. But I'm not going to require that. Please read my example. I'm looking at the, uh, the instructions here. I give an example of the period of time when my father left our family and what stages I was in. I'm relating it to Erickson's theory. I relate it to my sense of competitiveness that was still a part of my personality. And I can see the roots of that happening in early childhood. Both my, my size, small guy, the... No, I don't really view it as bullying. It was too small of a school, really. There was seven people in my class. So you know everybody it wasn't really bullying, but there certainly was taunting and challenging. I'm the small guy, and then this divorce, the first family in the town that goes through a divorce. So there's a sort of need I had to prove myself, and that kind of rose out of it and has become a permanent part of my personality. Sometimes in a negative way, as I, as I share, sometimes when I've been playing sports, I've really had to work on calming down, that losing is okay. Uh, you know, racquetball sports and stuff like that. I've tossed a few rackets every once in a while, and that's really not okay. And just finding a balance between being competitive, but yet being calm and enjoying the game because I'm certainly no professional at any of that. So I want to take us now to the section in the assignment called the criteria for success, and that is the rubric, and this is how I grade. I'm looking for you to cover particular sections that are outlined in this rubric. So they're in red. So first off, of course, a title page. And then for each one of these sections, really, really make it easy for me. That first section, nice, bold, say early childhood experiences, that first one. And then you're going to tell stories, at least one story. Please go deep. This is for you as much as it is an assignment. Do as many stories as you want to connect experiences that you've had that have shaped who you are in early childhood. Then we move on to family experience. Again, bold title, family experiences. I know as a grader that you're now moving into telling me stories. You could even say it. You could really, story number one, story number two, story number three. I love structure like that because it allows me to really richly experience. I don't have to look for transitions between one story and the other. You can make this as... That the stories are narrative, but the structure of the paper can be very much in terms of a, a nice structured outline. And so I encourage you to do that. We see that the family experiences that, of course, across the lifespan. And then we go into values, norms, and expectations. And these are specific to your family and our culture. So if your family grew up, let's say, a very conservative, Republican, Christian family, that has had an impact on you. It has to have had an impact on you, either as 
that you joined or you're somewhere out or you're just rebelling against that. You know, there's, but still there's that real existence of those ideas, thoughts, expectations, rituals, whatever going along with uh, your family that you can speak to and how those have shaped your personality. We then move on to a few more here. We have school experiences. The I cannot emphasize enough how important uh, school from grade school all the way up to college uh, this is. Then we look at specific ethnic racial factors. This is, it kind of plays on the discussion we were having about, we, we introduced the African uh, perspective on personalities. And I'm asking you to think about your own ethnicity and what, what role that plays. And maybe this is even an opportunity to explore some of that and say, you know, why, is my, why does my family have this? Why do they celebrate Thanksgiving? What is that? You know, why, do they, why do we celebrate uh, any holiday, Christ, Christmas or um, any of the Jewish holidays? Sorry, I wasn't able to come up with them right there. Any, uh, anything that's going on, what is it about that as part of my ethnicity and how does that shape my personality? So really cool stuff. Then we go, go into the final one, religious and spiritual factors. Again, I make the argument that even if you're not quote-unquote religious, that these values and expectations associated with religious values or spiritual values is still part of your life, either indirectly or directly. And if you're on a personal journey or maybe, wow, I just got, I, right before I did this, I got done grading the five hindrances quizzes and wow, are people on some interesting paths. You could take that information. You know, there was experiences that you talked about in that quiz that are directly relevant to addressing spiritual factors in your life. When you see this sort of like, I'm going to take this hindrances idea and I'm going to examine places in my life where there's, there's so many of you that, that identified hindrances and then identified your path out of them. Wow, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed reading all of those. I left comments on every single one. It was a really, really neat quiz. I'm really impressed with that level of insight. Um, I've come to expect it from you. It's normal now. You've all been doing so well. And finally here in the grading, we have, of course, mechanics, putting this together. So it's all organized and legible. I want you to see this not only as an assignment for this class, but a, but a personal journey. You get to keep this. I get to read it and I get the satisfaction of having evidence that you have participated in this class and you know how to take these theories and apply them for yourself. But what a great insight tool this is to just kind of review. You know, we all, as I said at the beginning of the class, we often see personality as something that you know, arose from inside of me, but it, it, it arises in a context. It arises in the expectations and cultures and norms of our society. And then as we start to pick things, we go to school, we get in sports, we get, there's this interaction between ourselves and our surroundings. Hence the word psychosocial development of personality. Great stuff. And I'm really looking forward to this assignment for you. So, I think I've done my role here of explaining this assignment as clear as I can make it. Use it as a personal journey. Outline it in a very clear way. Story number one, story number two, you know, however you want to do it. Make sure that you name the theory in your explanation. Use the terms of the theory when you're doing that. Uh, just don't say, oh, this is like Erickson. Nope, I want more than that. I want you to show me the richness of your story and how it relates to the theory. And I think that that's a great way to, not only self-exploration, but a great way to understand how these theories actually apply in the real world. So with that, I'll sign off. I'm going to post this into the course, and hopefully that will help some of you have some great clarity on this assignment, and I look forward to reading them. So have a great day, and I will see you next time.